the high point for anybody, and we talk about this, you know, Mecca for the Muslims. Uh, we say, where do people go? Uh, where do they go? Where do the Christians go? Perhaps they go to Rome if they're Roman Catholics, or if they're Church of England, then they might only go to Buckingham Palace, or if Syrian Church, whatever. I mean, people have their own places. But for us Marxists, what is inevitably become a shrine, although it is not meant to be, is the statue of Karl Marx at Highgate. My name is Harse Baines and uh, I'm currently the secretary of the CPIM's Association of Indian Communists, the overseas unit of the CPIM in Britain. I've uh, lived there since 1966, been involved with the party and the left work since 1975. If you trust, go through Highgate, they will, everybody will point you to the popular sun that is buried there in Highgate. It is the single most visited site by people from all over the world. Whether they're presidents, past presidents, uh, leaders of various parties, including the very latest one was uh, the president of Cuba. He visited Highgate Cemetery. And we've had the privilege of looking after that particular site that's been trusted through the Marx Memorial Library of which I'm also a trustee and I have the duty through our group of volunteers to safeguard that particular symbol the statue the headstone made by a famous sculptor uh, named Mr. Bradshaw who uh, sculpted that and won the design competition to put that together in the 50s uh, and that sits there, there were various designs, but the one that sits there was the one that was selected by the Marx Memorial Library as to be the headstone that should sit there. Uh, the plinth underneath was hollow, but has been strengthened, which I will explain why in a little while. But these are symbolic places where recently we held uh, a flag march which is quite unique, it's never been done. So, at Highgate, at Highgate, there is the original site where Marx, along with his daughter and his grandson, were buried. And that's a very small site. It's probably uh, two meters in today's terms, and it's going metric, by a meter. Very, very small, down a very, tight lane. Uh, it's a pri it was a private cemetery. Why Marx decided he wanted his family to be buried in a private cemetery rather than St. Pancras, which was a public cemetery? That was only Marx would answer that. But that's where he chose to be buried. It's the one thing that he chose for him and his family. So they're all buried on top of one another. It's a tiny little place. But because various people have visited it, it became literally impossible to do anything and people to go there. So things were being discussed over the years as to what to do. So as I said, Karl Marx was, I mean, he died on 14th of March, uh, 1883. And uh, at this gravesite that there were only 11 reportedly, but uh, according to our count, 13 people who were there at his funeral, including, of course, uh, Frederick Engels. And that site was difficult to visit. And in 1924, the Soviets tried to get that moved to the Soviet Union, to move it to Red Square, that it should be there and a symbol should be built there, a mausoleum should be there. Uh, but that was um, rejected by the family because the family became inheritors of that site. And it was through his daughter, Jenny, and her husband, they became the owners of that grave. So without their permission, the government would not issue a license for them to move it. 
the Prime Minister at that time, uh, MacDonald, was asked and he said he's received nothing in writing and also said no, it shouldn't be done. It seems very uh, incorrect to be interning marks from his chosen site and chosen cemetery to uh, the Soviet Union, to Moscow. So that was, that didn't happen. Then he went on, uh, then in the 40s again, there were some other attempts, oh, it's going to be moved. And as uh, the family members were leaving this planet and uh, leaving, and, and they decided that they would pass on the grave and its ownership to the Marx Memorial Library. So it's bequeathed to the library. The library itself, which Eleanor Marx had visited where the first international of the Working Men's Association was linked to and planned, uh, sits, as I said, in Clerkenwell Green. The library came into being in 1933 when in Berlin they were burning the books of Marx. It was a reaction to that. The sort of reaction we perhaps need to do these days. That if we're under attack, we need to safeguard our libraries, our, our journalism, our, our literature, our culture. And in that sense, it was Noreen Branson and her husband who were actually linked to the Indian freedom movement as well, as well as the communist movement, who set up that library. And through the library, and the works of Rajani Pamendat, who again is associated with the Indian movement, although very rarely visited India, but he's associated with the communist movement. And he, they decided that they would ask for that, uh, for, the, for the remains of Karl Marx to be moved to the present site, which is only about, what, 50 meters or less than that away. But it's a much more wider space, and where then this statue or this plinth was erected with the headstone. That happened in, as I said, 1954, a decision was made. Application was granted by the government to enable the library to do that. And uh, it had to be done. It had to be done in the middle of the night. Now you are moving one of the greatest thinkers of our time, Karl Marx and members of his family and his grandson in fact, who was also by them, to a new site. So they are done in the middle of the night in November 1954. I think it's 29th November, it could be 28th. It's moved then under oil lamps being burned to light up. There was no lighting in, in there. So they moved him during the night because they didn't want people attacking it or uh, trying to do anything different. And that's where Marx and his family are moved. At the same time, Eleanor Marx, whose remains were up till then kept through one, one organization, then they became the, which became in the 1920s, the Communist Party of Great Britain. They actually kept the ashes in their office. Then those were also interned and now are buried with Karl Marx and the rest of the family in the same grave. So that's where they lay today. And uh, the, 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 the structure was completed in 1956, around the time of my birth. Not for me particularly, but that's what it was done. Uh, and that's where it stands. But, but it hasn't been allowed to stand alone. There was obviously people were uh, not happy that there was this great symbol going up in Highgate of an ideology or a person representing an ideology that wants to see the collapse of the system that actually operates in Britain. But nonetheless, they said that is not a reason for refusal. So the permission could not be refused just because there was a disagreement with the ideology. And it's a lesson that we need to learn throughout the world that just by knocking down the statues, the symbols, you will not do away with the ideology. So the ideology won the day and that statue stands today, the headstone stands today, and people from all over the world go there. But it's not been allowed to stand alone. It comes under attacks constantly and quite often from fascists and racists. In uh, February of 1970, 
They tried to bomb it. A pipe bomb was actually laid and there was a blast took place and the headstone was toppled because it was hollow underneath, which has now been strengthened over the years quite, quite considerably. So it won't happen again. They tried to hack off the nose of Karl Marx. So if you ever go there and you look, examine very carefully the nose, you can still see Marx. It's been repaired to the best of everybody's ability. You can see the scratches on the nose where they tried to saw it off. But it's such tough material, now it's become pretty impossible. It's been dubbed by graffiti, by swastikas. It's been dubbed by National Front, the fascist organizations there. We, as I said, the, from our organization, have rendered support and guarded it. Even through the pandemic, when we were under attack, we stood there saying, no, this is one symbol we will protect. And we have stood there. And our involvement with the Marx Memorial Library and Marx Memorial Library involvement with the gravesite, as I said, goes back to Rajini Pamedat. Rajini Pamedat wrote India Today and guided us. So for us, Marxism is very relevant. And it's for, it wasn't surprising that in 1999, at the turn of the millennium, he's chosen as the number one person around the globe as the man of the century, man of the millennium. Sec and second came Albert Einstein. So he surpassed all in setting the agenda for humanity's emancipation. He really was the greatest thinker of all time. So it's a privilege for us to be part of that, to carry on this legacy as the custodians, to pass it on to the next generation, because that's what we're trying to do. We don't own it. There is a small charge levied these days, that's to maintain it. But we're not trying to profit from it. It is to maintain it for future generations. And it's our privilege and honor to host people who visit, come to London, and we say to them, please visit Marx at Highgate. Please visit the Marx Memorial Library. In fact, do more than that. Become its members, become its patrons, because we have a legacy to uphold and safeguard the science of Marxism, the living science that lives through all of us, through our lives, and none of us can escape that fact.